Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies in Stone Fort, Illinois. Bat shalom, everyone. Happy Sabbath. How's everyone enduring this heat? We're having a, a rather warm time here in Southern Illinois, but all is well. Today, according to the best that we can tell on God's calendar, is the third month. It's the fourth day of the year 5778. And according to our count to Pentecost, because we go by full moon, new moon, today is the seventh Sabbath or the 49th day. We will be celebrating back-to-back -back Sabbaths here at the Philadelphia Assemblies in Stone Fort. Tomorrow is the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost, or the Feast of Harvest. Okay, and today is the second day of June 2018. Of course, we got to go by man's calendar also. There's no other way around it. The title of today's lesson is simply Teachers of God. Teachers of God. And all we're going to do is we're going to show you throughout the Bible, throughout the history of the Bible, who the teachers of God are and who they are today. But we'll get into that in a minute. Why don't we go ahead and open up. We'll stand and we'll face the temple in Jerusalem. Heavenly Father, great God of Israel, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to gather as you've commanded us. Father, the only thing that we seek at this moment is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give us what you would have us see and hear, Lord, so that we can put it into practice in all our affairs. Father God, for these blessings and all your blessings, we thank you in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. Again, welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Those of you that know me, Brother Paul, I teach in English, I read fluent English, I teach in English. I back up what I teach by going to the Strong's and by going to the original Hebrew and Greek. Our other brother that teaches here, Brother brother Bob, he'll break down the Hebrew. He's more fluent in it. I don't go there. I prove it in English and I teach in English. That being said, teachers of God, we're going to start this off in Leviticus, the 10th chapter. In Leviticus, the 10th chapter. Did I say happy Sabbath? I don't know I said happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. There. Leviticus 10, Leviticus 10, and again, all we're going to do here is we're going to show you, starting with Israel, who teachers are according to God. The, the reason why this whole lesson came together was on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, I had a young lady who was calling me a prophet, and we know that the last prophet that there was was our Messiah. We know that. The book says that. He told Moses that. Peter reaffirmed that in Acts. And that's the one that we are required to either obey or say we don't believe him. We don't have faith in what he's saying and become disobedient. And there's consequences both ways. Favorable consequences for obedience and, of course, disfavorable consequences for disobedience or non-favorable consequences. And she was calling me a prophet. And she asked me, well, if you're not, I told her, I corrected her, I said, no, I'm not a prophet, I'm a teacher. And she didn't quite understand what I was saying. Because when you're filled with the Spirit, according to the Scripture, obviously you got something to say, you prophesy. But that doesn't mean I'm a prophet. What I get, I get from the prophets and from the apostles or disciples, and that makes me a servant of God, or like our Messiah said, a friend of Messiah, or his brother. But I'm a teacher. I'm not a prophet. So all I'm going to do here is break down what the book says about teachers. Who the teachers were under the old priesthood, who the teachers are under the new priesthood. And we'll start this off in Leviticus 10. And brother, start us off in verse 8. Leviticus 10 and verse 8. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. Said, always the Lord. It's always the Lord giving it to Moses and to Aaron. The entire book of the law given to Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote it down. Go ahead, brother. Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee. When ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation. Uh huh. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean. And he's telling he's telling Aaron that his through his lineage, this is when the Lord killed Nadab and Abihu, his son for offering strange fire. And the Lord is reaffirming through Aaron, this is what I've commanded you, this is what I want you to do, and this is your job. Let me reiterate what your job is. Your job is to 
make a difference between the holy and the unholy and between the unclean and the clean. Your job is to make that difference. And we're going to see that it's the Lord's commission in Levi to teach the difference. But it's got to come from the head priest. It's got to come from God to the intercessor, which at this time is the head priest, to the teachers, to the rest of the nation of Israel. Go ahead and continue, brother. Tell us where you're at and finish that. Verse 11. Yes, sir. And that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. You've got to have it from God. God chose the nation of Israel. He chose holy men that were inspired by the Holy Ghost and told some of the prophets through angels, write it down in a book. And that's what he did with the priesthood. He gave it to Moses. He told Moses how to do it with Aaron. Had it very specific on certain things they need to be exact. What they wore, when they wore it, how they wore it, how they had to purify themselves before they wore their clothing. The whole nine yards. The mentions of the tabernacle, the mentions of the altar, everything. Exactly how to do all the sacrifices, the whole nine yards. And the high priest was to make a difference between the holy and unholy and the unclean and the clean. And then he was to teach the people. And the way he did this was he taught the Levites who taught the people. Let's go to Numbers, the 16th chapter. Numbers, the 16th chapter. Number 16. Numbers 16. Brother, pick it up at verse 9. 16 and 9. Go ahead. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you. That the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. See what he's telling Korah? Korah's a Levite who says he wants more than just a Levite. He wants to be the high priest and take part of what the high priest job was. And Moses is saying, do you think it's a small thing that the Lord has separated you Levites to take charge of the tabernacle and everything? And to teach the people. We're going to see that teaching the people was one of their jobs. He's going, you can't have the high priest job too. you got to do what the Lord gave you to do. He chose you to be the teachers, not to be the high priest. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 10. Yes, sir. And, and he hath brought thee near to him. And all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also. Now, Levi was also a priest, but they weren't the high priest. They had certain jobs they had to do within the sacrificial rituals, if you or ordinances. But it was the high priest that took charge of all the sacrifices and what he did with the blood and how they got it, everything out of the camp. The high priest orchestrated it all and commanded it all. And Levi would do certain portions of that. But it was all under the high priest to be charged of the, of the priesthood. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. Yes, sir. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? One more verse. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Ab Abiram, uh -huh. the sons of Elab, which said, We will not come up. But they didn't even want to hear anything that the intercessor Moses had to say. They were disobedient priests, or disobedient Levite teachers. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the third chapter. Deuteronomy, the third chapter. I'm sorry, the 33rd chapter. Thank you, Jeremy. It pays to have a reader that's not in the lesson, but paying attention to the lesson. Keep the teacher honest. God knows I need to be kept honest sometimes. I get all over the place, and yet before you know it, I don't know what I'm teaching. Not true. Top yourself out there, people. Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33. And brother, start off in verse 1, then we'll skip. 33 and 1, go ahead. And this is the blessing. Wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. So this is the blessing, or this is um, what the Lord gave to Moses to bless the nation of Israel by tribe, okay? And it's the same thing like Jacob did when he blessed the heads of the nation of Israel, the twelve sons. When the, when the Lord changed his name to Israel, he blessed each and every individual and gave them Tribal blessings are more than just, all right, this is just for you, son. That was for his lineage. Okay, and now Moses is going to reaffirm that. Skip down to verse 8 and continue. This is for Levi's. 8 and continue, brother. 
10 of Levi, he says, Let thy thumb, let thy thumb in, and thy urim be with, the, with thy holy one, uh -huh. whom thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah. About the, this is all having to do with the priesthood, the thummim and the, and the urim, and uh, what the priest had to wear with the stones on it and everything, the headset, and how he would communicate with God. It all had to do with the priesthood. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 9. Who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he acknowledge his brother, nor knew his own children, for they have observed thy word and kept thy covenant. Go ahead. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. This is the blessing to Levi. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. Go ahead. Middle of 10. Don't they shall, less than two months. Go they shall put incense before thee, and Holbert and Holbert sacrifice upon thine altar. Uh -huh. Bless, Lord, his, his substance, and accept the work of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that rise against him, and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. So now the job of Levi was, he was part of the priesthood. They had to teach Jacob the judgments and Israel his law. They shall put incense before thee, and hold burnt sacrifices upon thine altar. In other words, they had to cater to the priesthood and the things that the Levites were commanded by God to do. And the Lord said that he was going to bless thy substance. His inheritance was directly from the Lord. Every other tribe got an inheritance in the Holy Land except for Levi. <coughs> Levi's inheritance came straight from the Lord and from the other. The rest of the nation would take care of Levi. Because Levi, along with the high priest, were the ones that got the oracles from God. And when the book says that they were the only nation that the Lord ever knew, it came through the high priest to the teachers to the rest of the nation. The whole nation wasn't a whole 300 million people or whatever of priests. When it said that in Exodus, the 19th chapter, what the Lord was alluding to was that way they conducted themselves would prove that they were servants of God. Not that each and every one was an individual priest. And that was for the stranger also that came out of Egypt with them. That wasn't just for physical Israel. That was for physical Israel and the strangers that joined themselves to them to serve the Lord. Only Levi had the charge to teach the people. Let's go to Malachi, the second chapter. Malachi, the second chapter. Last book of the Old Testament. Malachi, Malachi 2. And brother, we're going to pick this up in verse 1. Malachi 2. And pick this up in verse 1. Go ahead. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. Go ahead. This is talking about the Levitical priesthood. Go ahead. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. In other words, because you don't pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your face. I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your face. If you go to Deuteronomy 28, he's explicit on the punishments to the nation, the physical nation of Israel. Because there's a nation of Israel today, but it's not comprised of just physical. And it's not comprised of the entire physical nation. And we're going to see that. Go ahead, brother. Even the dung of your solemn feet, and one shall take you away with it. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. My covenant was with him of life and peace. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me, and was afraid before my name. Go ahead, brother. The law of truth was in his mouth. Who's the teachers according to the Levitical priesthood? The, the, the priests, the Levites, his law was in their mouth. Go ahead. And iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and it turned many away from iniquity. And turned many away from iniquity. Go ahead. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. The priest's lips should keep knowledge. And today the teacher's lips should keep knowledge. And, the, and Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, defines what a, a preacher of God is or a teacher of God. That he sought good doctrine, good words, and that he sought it out of God's word. And I'm paraphrasing, of course. Go ahead and continue, brother. Where are you at and continue? Middle of seven. Go ahead. And they should speak the law at his mouth, 
For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The priest is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The priest at this time was the Levitical priesthood, and they were the teachers. Go ahead. Verse 8. But ye are departed out of the way. But you departed out of the way, Levi. In other words, you started bringing false doctrine. You stopped bringing what thus saith the Lord. Go ahead. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Let's go to Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. Isaiah 42, and this goes into all the curses. We're just going to read one because this is very explicit on who this comes from. Isaiah 42, and this curse is to the nation of Israel, the physical nation of Israel, not the nation of Israel that's comprised today of all individual nations. This is the physical nation of Israel. Isaiah 42, and pick it up at 22, brother. 42 and 22, go ahead. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, uh -huh. and they are hidden prison houses. They are for a prey, and none deliberate, for a spoil, and none say it to the sword. Now, when you go and you look at the statistics of the, the members in prison by race or nationality, you'll see that about 90% of it is comprised of the physical nation of Israel. So, the Lord is proving what he's doing today. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. Uh -huh. And among you will give ear. Who among you will give ear to this? Go ahead. Who will hearken and for the time to come? Uh huh. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel for the robbers? So who put Israel in the, in the holes and who spoiled them and who hid them in prison houses? Who made them for a prey and none delivered for a spoil and none saith restore? Who did this? Go ahead, brother. Did not the Lord? Did not the Lord? Go ahead. He against whom we have sinned. He against whom we have sinned. God's definition of sin is transgression of the law. Or when he says wicked, it translates lawless. Go ahead, brother. For they would not have sinned. Oh, sorry. For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. They wouldn't walk in his ways, and Israel was not obedient unto his law. Go ahead. Therefore he had poured, him, he had poured upon him the fury of his anger uh -huh. and the strength of battle. And it had set him on fire around the belt. Yet he knew not, and it burned him. Yet he laid it on the heart. And Israel does today, they don't even realize what's going on. They don't even know who they are. The Lord said that there wouldn't be a remembrance of them. Individuals are waking up, but it's not time for the entire nation. We're going to read the entire nation's not going to wake up until Messiah returns. But individuals will. Go and read Solomon's prayer in 1 Kings. I believe it's 7 and 8. 7, 8, 9, and I think it's somewhere in Chronicles, too. Go read that prayer and read what the Lord answered according to that prayer. Solomon, the wisest man in the world, kind of gives you a breakdown in the Bible in that prayer to the Lord. And if the nation of Israel is wherever you scatter them, if the individuals come to you with sincere repentance and all this, go look at that prayer. In the meantime, we're going to Nehemiah, the 8th chapter. No, 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 don't go look at the prayer now. We're going to Nehemiah 8. I got to laugh. Hey, I'm doing something this week. I was supposed to do this lesson last week, but I had a bit of a family emergency. My youngest got sick. I had to take him to the doctor. Brother Bob filled in for me, so we're a little late. And I'm a little punchy because I had all these jokes all planned last night. No, I'm just kidding. Nehemiah 8. Nehemiah 8. Let's see when Nehemiah and Ezra, they get the, um, the opportunity to rebuild the temple and to rebuild Jerusalem. Let's see. Who, teach, who the teachers were. Nehemiah 8, and pick it up at verse 8, brother. Go ahead. So they read from the book of the law distinctly, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. Uh-huh. And Nehemiah, which is which is the Tershatha, uh -huh. and Ezra the priest described, uh -huh. and the Levites that taught against the people. Oh, and the Levites that what? Taught the people. That taught the people. The Levites were teaching the people. You had a priest, you had scribes, and you had Levites that taught the people. Go ahead, brother. Said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Because they didn't hear the words of the law for so long, they found a copy of the book of the law, and they were reading it, and the people were weeping, and they had to stop them. They had to tell them, Wait a minute, man. This is a feast. This ain't a time for weeping. This is a time to rejoice. Go ahead, brother. 
Then he said unto them, Yeah. Then he said unto them, Go your way, uh -huh. eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send the portion unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Uh -huh. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Go ahead, brother. So if the Levites killed all the So the Levites, the, the teachers filled all the people. Go ahead. Saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. Uh -huh. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Absolutely. They understood the law now. Why? Because the Levites were teaching them. Wait, this ain't a day to be sorrowful. This is a day of great joy. It's trumpets, man. Go home and eat. Re rejoice before God. Go ahead. One more verse, brother. And on the second day we're... And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, uh -huh. the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even, even to understand the words of the law. Yes, sir. So the Levites stilled all the people, and the Levites were the ones, and Ezra the scribe, to make, they made them understand the words of the law. Because they found a book. These people, some of these people had never even known there was a book of the law, probably. They had heard about it, some of them. But here they are, they find a copy of the book of the law. Because you had scribes all over the place, and every king that was ever anointed by God had to write himself a copy of the book of the law. And he had to stay in that book continually so he wouldn't turn to the right or to the left. We could see how difficult that must be as king, because every king fell short in one way or another, especially the king that was a man of God's own heart, King David. Let's continue. Let's go to Nehemiah, the seventh chapter. Back it up one book. And, brother, we're going to pick it up in verse 61. We're dealing with Levi still. 7 and 61. Go ahead. And these were they which went up also from Kamala. Uh-huh. The Harisha, Terib, Adon, and Immer. But they could not shew their father's house, nor their seed, whether they were of Israel. So you had some brothers, they were Solomon's servants that came up, and they couldn't show that they were Israelites. They couldn't show their seed. They were in captivity. They can't prove their genealogy. Somewhere along the line, it had been broke up many times, just like, just like slavery in America, sisters and brothers. As sad and all that was, that was straight from God. And there are those today that were slaves in America who can't prove your genealogy. Some may be able to, but a majority cannot. Go ahead, brother. The children of Deliah and the children of Tobiah and the children of Nekoda. 640 and 50. Uh -huh. And the priest, and of the priest, the children of Habiah, the children of Kaz, the children of Barzillai, which took one of the daughters of Barzillai and Gil the Gileadite. Gileadite. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And was called after their name. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy. But it was not found. So, and of the priests, these are the children of Habeah, of Kaz, Barzillai. These are their children. They sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but it was not found. It wasn't found. Therefore, what, brother? Therefore were they as polluted, put from the priesthood. Therefore were they as polluted, put from the priesthood. Because only the Levites could teach, they could read that in the law. They weren't going to stand up there and get all puffed up. I'm a priest. I'm, oh, oh, look at me. Wait a minute. Prove who you are. Oh, you can't prove it? Then you're polluted and put from the priesthood. Let's go verify this by the mouth of two or three witnesses of matter or fact established. Let's go to Ezra, the second chapter. Back it up a book. Ezra 2. Ezra 2. Ezra, the second chapter. This was a big deal, sisters and brothers. Because if you're not a priest, according to the laws of the nation of Israel, if you're not a Levite, you can't teach. You're a common person, or what's known as a stranger, just like someone that's not a physical Israelite. This is under the Levitical priesthood. Ezra 2, pick it up at verse 58, brother. We're going to read through 62. Ezra 2 and verse 58. Go ahead. All the nothing. Nethanim, and the children of Solomon's servants, who were 390 and 2. And that was verse 60. I neglected to read that in uh, Nehemiah 7. 
but we alluded to it. Go ahead and continue, brother. 59. Yes, sir. And these were they which went up from Tomala, Tal Talharsa, Terib, Adan, and Emmer. Uh huh. But they could not shew their father's house and their seed, whether they were of Israel. So they couldn't show whether or not they were even of Israel. Go ahead. Children of Beliah, children of Tobiah, uh -huh. children of Nakoda, 615. Go ahead. And of the children of the priest, the children of Tobiah, the children of Todd, the children of Barzillai, uh -huh. which took a wife with the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite. Gileadite. Go ahead, brother. And was their, and was called after their name. Yes, sir. What did they seek? These sought, these sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore. They were as polluted, put from the priesthood. Therefore, they were polluted, as polluted, put from the priesthood. I'm just going to make a blanket statement. Be careful where that false pride leads you. Be very careful where that false pride leads you, sisters and brothers. Let's continue. Let's go to Matthew, the 23rd chapter. I'm not the Bible police. I, I got nothing to give anybody. I don't have a punishment or reward or nothing. But I can read, and as a teacher that has been set up by God, be careful where that false pride leads you. Matthew, the 23rd chapter. Matthew 23. And sisters and brothers, we're going to pick this up at verse 37. Matthew 23. Matthew 23 and 37. Go ahead, brother. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou hast killed the prophet. O thou that killest the prophet. Uh -huh. And stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicks, her, her chickens, under her wing, uh -huh. and ye would know. Go ahead, brother. Behold, your house is left unto ye desolate. Yes, sir. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye say, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Why did Messiah come to the earth to begin with? He was teaching, and, they, and, and all these other nations were coming on him. What did he tell them? I have not come but unto the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. I'm not here for nobody else right now. I'm here for them. To put them back on their job. And that's exactly what he did. What did he get? He got 12 disciples. He asked them to write things in a book. He asked them to witness and to go out throughout all the world. Teaching the world everything that he commanded them. And to be baptized in his name. And that's exactly what he did. When he returned, he set Israel back up on their job. But he also said, I would gather all of you as a hen gathers her chickens. But you don't want no part of this. You don't want no part of this. So he says right here, when you're scattered, your house will be left unto you desolate. You will not even hear about me until I return to gather you. And there's a lot of the nation of Israel that prophecy says... They're not even going to know that they're Jews or Israelites until people from other nations grab a hold of them and say, we're taking you back to Jerusalem because we hear that God is with you because you're an Israelite. It's not time for gathering the nations yet. We're going to show you when that time for gathering all nations together is, but let's continue. Let's go to Luke, the 13th chapter. No, you know what? That's the same thing. We don't need two witnesses on that. Let's go to Joel 3. Everything we just read in Matthew is in Luke 13. Let's go to Joel, the third chapter. Let's go to Joel, the third chapter. Joel 3. Joel. Joel. I like Joel. Joel 3. And brother, let's pick it up at verse 1. 3 and 1. We saw what Jesus just got done saying. Our Messiah said that he would have gathered Israel often, but they didn't want to be gathered. They were disobedient children. We know how the priests went south. That's why Israel scattered today. Joel 3 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Go ahead. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold the girl for wine, that uh -huh. they might drink. Uh -huh. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre, and Zidon, 
and all the coast of Palestine, uh -huh. will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my ungodly, or my goodly pleasant things. So now the Lord is talking here through the mouth of Joel to the other nations. He's going to gather them together. And this gathering here, this is Armageddon, where they have battle when the Messiah returns to take back his kingdom by force. And that's when the nations will be gathered together. All the nations will be gathered together. Real quick synopsis of what happens. The Lord beats their heads, takes his kingdom by force, and he scatters all the heathen nations back to the land of their origin. And then he's going to do this. Go ahead, brother. Verse, verse 7. Verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place. No. All right, verse 6 then. Verse 5. Oh. Because you, no, you already read oh, 5. Pick it up at 6. Get children, out of the lesson and get in the book. Verse 6. Go ahead. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem uh -huh. have ye sold into the Grecian, that ye might remove them far from their borders. 70 AD. Go ahead. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. I will raise them up out of the place where you have sold them, and return your recompense on your own head. We did finish that, but that's worth reading yeah. again. So this is when the nation of Israel will be gathered again. Okay? Now, let's go to Ezekiel, the 11th chapter. Ezekiel, the 11th chapter. Ezekiel 11. Ezekiel 11. And this is what's going to happen when the Lord gathers Israel out of all nations. When our Messiah comes and he punishes the Gentile or heathen nations, all nations except physical Israel, because it is the time of the Gentiles now, and when he punishes them, then he's going to gather Israel. That punishment of those heathen or Gentile nations is their gathering. That's where, in another lesson we could show you, the Lord's going to send them all back to their place of origin. That's why when the Lord returns, three times a year, everybody's got to come to Jerusalem and keep the feast. And the book even calls it tabernacles specifically. If you don't come up to keep tabernacles, he's not going to let it rain on your crops. Because at that time, no more Dominic's, Kroger, Jewel, whatever. You grow your own food now. And if you don't come up to keep the feast of the Lord... He's not going to let it rain. In other words, he's going to choke your food out of you. You're not going to be able to eat. Then if you still don't come up, he's going to put pestilence on you and all this. That's the gathering of the nations and the gathering of physical Israel will happen at that time. Ezekiel 11, and let's pick it up at verse 14, brother. 11 and 14. This is Messiah's return. Go ahead. And again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh -huh. Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel holy, are they are they whom in the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, uh -huh. Get you far from the Lord. Unto us is this land given in possession. Go ahead, brother. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, Although I have cast them afar off, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, uh -huh. and although I have scattered them among the, among the countries, yet will I be to them as little as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Yet he'll be to them as a little sanctuary wherever he scatters them. And you're seeing that today. There's Israelite classes everywhere. There's individual Israelites everywhere, fearing God and keeping his commandments. And at the same time, this is the calling of individuals going on right now. Individuals from all nations. Messiah said, I have others that are not of this fold. Them also must I bring. This is that time. But yet when Messiah returns, he's going to do something with the Levitical priesthood. Go ahead, brother. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the country where ye have been scattered. Uh -huh. And I will give you the land of Israel. Yes, sir. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof. And all the abominations that are up from them. So all the ways that they're not serving God, that they're they're serving other gods, going to take all that away. Go ahead, brother. Uh, <laughs> verse 19. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and 
will give them a heart of flesh, uh -huh. that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Uh -huh. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things, and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. So now in other places it says that the Lord is going to gather the entire physical nation of Israel when he returns and take them into the wilderness and plead with them for three and a half years. And that pleading is not going to be, oh, please keep my commandments. At that time, that's going to be, you're going to keep my commandments and you're not making it out of here. And in that purging of the entire physical nation of Israel, he's going to set up that priesthood again. Let's go to the 44th chapter of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 44, Ezekiel 44, and one verse, verse 2, and then we're going to skip a little bit. 44 and 2, go ahead, brother. 44 and 2. 44, Ezekiel 44, verse 2. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. So now we see what time it is. The God of Israel is on this earth again with Israel. Physical and spiritual that have made the first resurrection, and physical and spiritual that are still alive, that the Lord has given them their inheritance in the land. And that's where the stranger gets an inheritance with the nation of Israel, whatever tribe he sojourns with. Those are live people, and that carries over into the spiritual. When you go into the Father's kingdom, and you've got 12 foundations with disciples' names on it, and 12 gates with the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel's names on it, whatever tribe that you've sojourned with and been deemed worthy to sojourn with, that's how you're going to get into the Father's kingdom. Skip down to verse 9 and let's continue, brother. I mean, uh, verse 5 and continue. We're going to go 5 through 9. Go ahead, verse 5. And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I have to say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. And all the laws thereof, and mark well the entering in of the house, with ev with every going forth of the sanctuary. Go ahead, brother. And thou shalt say unto the, and thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you all your abom, let it suffice you of all your abominations. Go ahead, brother. And that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and circum and uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat, of the, the fat and the blood. And they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. They've broken my covenant because of all your abominations. Because Israel taught the people wrong. This isn't actually bringing Gentiles that are uncircumcised into the temple. They'd be stoned before they got halfway through the doorway, shot through with arrows or something. This is talking about spiritually, just like it's talking about when their prophets used um, untempered mortar to build up the house. Talking about bad teaching. This is talking about they led them down the wrong path. They taught them to fear false gods instead of the God of Israel. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. Verse 8. Oh, Go yeah. ahead, verse 8. Get out of the lesson. Get in the book. Verse 8, brother. And ye have not kept the charge of my holy thing. But ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God, No stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Skip down to verse 15 and continue. And the Levites that are gone... Oh, I'm sorry. Verse uh, 15? Yes, sir. But the priests, but the, priest, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary... When the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me uh -huh. to offer unto the fat and the blood, the fat and the blood. So the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok that kept the charge of the sanctuary, that kept the charge before, their sons now are going to take, take, take care of the charge of the sanctuary. Because at that time, when their fathers were the Levites and the priests. They let strangers uncircumcised in the heart and the flesh into the sanctuary. They taught them wrong. So now the Lord's going to reinstitute it and he's going to use their sons, the lineage of Levi, and reinstitute the physical 
flesh and blood, earthly priesthood, when Messiah is here. Go ahead and continue, brother. Saith the Lord God. Uh huh. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen, with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them, while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. Yes. Go ahead. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. We're going to skip for sake of time here. You keep reading. We're going to skip right down to verse 23. The Lord, all he's doing is he's very being very specific on how they're going to set up this priesthood. Skip down to 23 and continue, brother. And in controversy, they verse, shall... Verse 23, brother. Oh, sorry. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane. What was the job of the priest? What, was the Lord, what did the Lord tell Moses to tell Aaron? That their job was to teach between the, the holy and the unholy, the clean and the unclean. Make a difference between it and teach the people. What are they doing here? They're making a difference between the holy and profane. Go ahead. And cause them to discern between the unholy. The unclean and the clean. So profane is just unholy, and the clean and the unclean. One more verse, brother. And in the controversy, they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my my judgment. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all thine assemblies, and they shall hallow my Sabbath. So the Lord set Israel right back up on their job to be the priest. But now, if the priests are scattered now, where was it officially changed? Where did the Levitical priesthood end? And where did God's priesthood start? Very simple. Let's go to Matthew, the 27th chapter. Matthew, the 27th chapter. Matthew 27. And we're going to read two verses. Matthew 27. And brother, pick it up at verse 50. 27 and 50. Go ahead. Jesus, when he had tried again with a loud voice uh -huh. yielded up the ghost. So Jesus has just died on the cross. Our Messiah has just been sacrificed for the sins of the world. Go ahead, brother. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. The veil of the temple was ripped in half from the top to the bottom. That's where the priest, under the Levitical priesthood, when he had the sin sacrifice, had to sprinkle that temple veil seven times. That was symbolic right there of the change of the priesthood. No more flesh and blood priesthood. Now we're under the priesthood of Messiah. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Brother, I'm going to pick this up a little bit, so try to hang with me. I want to try to get this under an hour. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, and pick it up in verse 14, brother. 4 and 14, go ahead. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. We have a great high priest, go ahead. That is passed into the heavens. Uh-huh. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. So our Messiah is now our high priest. Go ahead, brother. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Uh-huh. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'm telling you, I'm going to cut scriptures and I'm adding them. Good job. Let's go to uh, Hebrews the 8th chapter. Hebrews the 8th chapter. This is what the disciples were preaching after Jesus ascended into heaven, after he walked with them for 40 days and 40 nights, teaching them all things pertaining to the kingdom of God. This was the biggest contention with the Israelite priesthood. Them trying to say, what do you mean I'm not a priest anymore? Because the high priest was priest for life till he died. You're taking my job from me. Who is Jesus? He's dead. What are you talking about? We watched him get crucified. Ain't no resurrection. And then the disciples are teaching, no, this Jesus is the only way to the Father. And that's where all the headbutting was between the Israelites that were always trying to stone Paul and what Paul was teaching. And then you had the other nations, obviously. They didn't want to hear it either. Hebrews 8, pick it up at verse 1, brother. 8 and 1, go ahead. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is sent on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Uh-huh. A minister in the sanctuary. And of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. Not the one here on earth that man has. He's up in heaven. Go ahead. For every high priest is, is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is of 
necessity that this man have somewhat also to You can go back into Leviticus and you can read about all the sacrifices and everything and how specific they were. Go ahead, brother. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Uh huh. Who serve unto unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was in admonished uh -huh. of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mountain. And you go back and you read it, and when Moses made the, the Ark of the Covenant, and when he made the tabernacle and the curtains and everything, it was very specific. The Lord left nothing out on exactly how he wanted it done. Just like today. He doesn't leave anything out. We don't have the entire book of the law, but we got enough to gain our salvation back. And we know exactly how to do it. Some things are a little gray, but the things that are salvational, to get your right back to the tree of life, are exact and absolute. Where are you at? And finish that, brother. Yes, sir. That's the last verse. Go ahead. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry. By how, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon the Upon better promise. And that better covenant is that the Messiah was here, suffered and died for the sins of the world. And if you want a right to the tree of life, or you want to be a partaker in the, the good side of the Father's kingdom, that prophet like unto Moses is Jesus. He's now our mediator and high priest. That better covenant is he suffered and died. It's his shed blood now instead of the shed blood of a lamb or a goat to have your sins atoned for. Go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews 10. <laughs> Pick it up at verse 19, brother. 10 and 19. Go ahead. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of who? Jesus. By the blood of the Messiah. Go ahead. By a new and living way, which he hath concerned for us through the veil. Consecrated for us. Go ahead. That is to say, his flesh. Through the veil, that is his flesh. You don't need the temple veil anymore. His veil is his flesh which was ripped and torn for the sins of the world. Go ahead, brother. Uh, by a new and living way. Which, oh, verse 21. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. And all the scriptures tell you that that's the word. We have a high priest now over the house of God, and that's our Messiah. Go to Romans, the second chapter. Romans, the second chapter. Sisters and brothers, I made the blanket statement a few times in this lesson that it's about the gathering of individuals, not nations. You can go into Ephesians and see that yourself, where the Lord took down that wall of partition between all the other nations and the physical nation of Israel. It's not about nations right now, sisters and brothers, and it's not going to be until the Messiah returns. Romans 2, 1 verse, 29, brother, go ahead. But he is a Jew, which is born inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. But now let's not read this, and let's not twist this. Circumcision for men is still required, or you have no part of way to partake of the Passover, and if you can't partake in Messiah, you got no right back to the tree of life. This isn't talking about physical circumcision. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, in the heart, because that heart has to be circumcised too. It's about circumcision of the heart. Go to Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians 3. Galatians 3, and pick it up at 26, brother. 3 and 26, go ahead. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Faith is belief, turns into obedience. Messiah is that prophet like unto Moses. Go ahead, brother. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Uh -huh. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all one in the Messiah. Go ahead, brother. And if ye be Christ, then are then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. And you can go back to Genesis 26 and see why the Lord continued that promise to Abraham through Isaac and to Jacob. He said, because your father Abraham kept all my commandments, statutes, and judgments, and laws. 
He had the covenant made with him. Same covenant. Let's go to Titus, the first chapter. Titus, the first chapter. So now we see Israel is scattered throughout all nations. That priesthood is, if you will, put on a shelf. Our priesthood now is a heavenly priesthood. Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus being our high priest. Our Messiah being our high priest. Titus, the first chapter. And pick it right up at verse 1, brother. Titus 1 and 1. Go ahead. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of, Christ, of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which, he, which is after godliness uh -huh. and hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching. What does it mean to preach? Well, if you're a teacher of God, it means you're teaching the scriptures. I made a statement earlier and said that I am a teacher of God. That God set me up. You can tell who's set up and who's not. Are they bringing it straight? Can you stand to tolerate them for an hour, an hour and a half? Or are they just over here bumbling and stumbling and rambling? They don't know what they're talking about. Teachers of God. Tell us where you're at and pick that up and continue, brother. Verse 4. Yes, sir. To Titus, mine own son after the common faith. To Titus, who's a Gentile. I didn't put it in here, but you can prove this on your own. Titus is a Gentile. The scriptures say that. Go ahead, brother. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Go ahead. For this cause I left thee in Crete. For this cause or this reason I left you in Crete. Go ahead. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. That you should set in order the things that are wanting. What's wanting according to Paul? The message going out. Teaching the people. Starting with Israel and Jerusalem. And then throughout all nations. To all the Gentiles. Go ahead. And ordain others in every city. And I want you to ordain others in every city. Go ahead. As I had appointed thee. As I had appointed you an elder. Not as I had told you. As I had appointed you an elder, I want you to appoint other elders in all the cities. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's go to Titus 2 and read one verse. Verse 1. We'll scale. Titus 2 and 1. Go ahead. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Speak the things that become sound doctrine. Who's he talking to? Talking to Titus, the Gentile. Skip down to verse 7 and continue, brother. In all things, shewing us a pattern of good works. In doctrine. In what? In doctrine what? Go ahead. Showing uncorruptness. Showing uncorruptness your conversation. Showing a pattern of good works. Go ahead. Gravity. Sincerity. Uh-huh. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. What does the preacher of God do? He seeks out, out of the word, sound doctrine. Go ahead, brother. That, that he that is of the con contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say about you. They can see it. They, all they can do is hang their head and go, ah, oh, the word's convicting them. Like when Peter was bringing it, and it pricked all them brothers and sisters in the heart, and 3,500 were added to the church. More like Stephen when he was teaching and it pricked him in the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth and, tried, and they killed him. The book says we haven't even resisted under blood yet. But I tell you what, I've been in situations where I've been teaching. I got a little under the collar, started sweating a little bit, thought I was getting taken into the alley. Because the word of God convicts. But who's he talking to about sound speech that cannot be condemned? That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. He's talking to Titus. He's not a Levite, he's a Gentile. It's not the time for that Levitical priesthood right now. Skip down to 11 and continue, brother. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. And it has appeared to all men. Messiah made sure of that when he commissioned the 12 disciples. He even prayed for us that through the disciples' written word, we would come to strong faith in Messiah. Go ahead and continue, brother. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, 
we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present time. Uh-huh. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Paul basically writing and telling Titus, you need to be preaching the gospel, because this is a summation of the gospel. And then what does he tell him? Verse 15. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. What does the teacher do? He speaks and he rebukes with all, and he exhorts with all authority. If he's a teacher of God, go ahead and finish that. Let no man despise you. Let no man despise you. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the first chapter. 1 Timothy, the first chapter. 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy 1. And brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 1. Go ahead. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, uh -huh. unto Timothy, mine own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Timothy, another Gentile, physical gen or another physical Caucasian, Gentile according to Genesis, the 10th chapter. Go ahead. As I, as I besought thee to abide still in Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. That thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. In other words, I need you to go over there and I need you to exhort, reprove, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you. Make sure they're not bringing no lies. They start bringing lies, you go set them straight, Timothy. Tell them to teach. Go to the fourth chapter of 1 Timothy. We'll pick it up at verse 1. 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1. Brother, go ahead. Now the Spirit speaketh expresses, expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, uh -huh. giving heed to, to, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And that's happening today, absolutely. There's all kinds of folly and, and wrong teachings out there that are contrary to Scripture. Go ahead, brother. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Go ahead, brother. Forbidding the marriage and commanding to abstain from meat which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe it and know the truth. And this is just talking about false doctrine. Oh, you're a priest, you can't get married. Oh, for 40 days every Friday you can't eat meat, only fish, which is meat anyway. So, But this is just talking about false doctrines like those. Go ahead. Uh, verse 4. For every creature of God is good, and nothing can be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. And every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. And receive everything with thanksgiving, thanks for all things to our Heavenly Father through Messiah. Go ahead, brother. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. In Leviticus, the 11th chapter. It tells you exactly, it's been set apart by God, what's good to eat and what's not good to eat. But all things for the purpose they created are good and should be received with thanksgiving. This is one place they like to go to try to twist the scriptures. Like Peter said, those that are unlearned in the scriptures, they rest them or twist them to their own destruction. This has nothing to do with allowing pork and lobster and all kinds of abominable stuff. This is talking about every creature is good, and it's good for the reason it was created. It should be received with thanksgiving. Dogs, cats, pets like that that bring you love or whatever, receive them with thanksgiving. The cow... Or the venison that the Lord puts on your plate, receive it with thanksgiving. For it's all sanctified or set apart by the word of God in prayer. And when you go to Leviticus 11, it's all been sanctified or set apart. You had to clear that one up. Go ahead and continue, brother. If thou put the brethren in, the re in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. And what is Paul telling Timothy? If you put the brothers in remembrance of these things, of these things you shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ, or a good teacher of the Messiah. Go ahead. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. Nourished up in the words of faith and good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter. And it looks like I'm just going to run over a few minutes. Hopefully by 5 after we'll be done. 1 Corinthians 16. I tried. 1 Corinthians 16. And one verse. 16 and one verse. 1 Corinthians 16, brother. And verse 10. Go ahead. Now, if Timotheus comes, see that he may be with you without fear, 
for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. And Timotheus is just, uh, if, if I'm pronouncing it right, is just Greek for Timothy. It says, if, you, if he comes, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Paul's going around setting up churches, ordaining elders and everything else. That's what he told Timothy and Titus to do, and that's what they're doing. Go to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Back it up a little bit, and this will be it. 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. And brother, we're going to pick this up at verse 13. We're going to read two verses, and we'll skip. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. Go ahead. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. That's it. That's cut and dried. That is absolute. This isn't the only place that says it. By one Spirit. By one Spirit. Our Heavenly Father gave it to our Messiah to give to us. By one Spirit we're baptized into one body. There's not many ways to come to salvation. There's one way. Through Messiah to our Heavenly Father. And our Heavenly Father has to call you. Go ahead and continue, brother. Tell us where you're at and continue. Uh, middle of 13. Yes, sir. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, whether, or, oh, sorry, and have all been made to drink in the one spirit. And that drink is a spiritual drink, that's spiritual food. Go ahead. For the body is not one member, but many. And the body is not one member, it is many. Not everyone's going to stand up here and teach. Not everyone's going to be a strong, te a strong sister in the word that's able to teach others. Some of us might be relinquish to vacuuming the floor before the congregation gets here. Getting to church early, making sure the air is on or whatever. There's many jobs within the body and every one of them are just as important as the other. Not everybody can stand here a teacher, but this isn't some glorious position either. Every time I put a lesson together, I get convicted in the heart of where I'm falling short. This is what the Lord gave me, this is what I do. Take charge of what the Lord has given you and give it everything you've got. Clean yourself of all the secret places, man. Walk perfect before God with a perfect heart, with a perfect mind. And then whatever the Lord gives you, pray on it. Meditate on it. And then when you're sure it's coming from God, and he'll never give you anything that's beyond your highest understanding of his word. When you're sure it's from him, take it with everything you got and run with it. That's being pleasing in his sight. Where are you at, brother? 47. Yeah. You're done with 14? Verse 27. Go ahead. Yeah. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Uh-huh. And God has set some in, in the church, first apostles. God has set some in the church, first apostles. We know who the apostles are. Ain't nobody today an apostle. We can be disciples. That just means we're followers of Apostle walked with Christ. Apostles got it straight from the Messiah. And then he came back for 40 days and 40 nights and walked with him and made sure they understood. And then he promised them the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. And he came and opened their understanding. They're speaking in tongues on Pentecost. Carrying the gospel of Messiah. Those were the apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Old Testament, full of prophets. New Testament, full of disciples or apostles. Go ahead, brother. And God has set some of the church, the apostles, secondarily, prophets, thirdly, teachers. Thirdly, he put teachers. There's people like me. There's nothing holy in here. In fact, we're building bathrooms. There's nothing holy. What's holy in here is the holy convocation where two or more are gathered in my name. Messiah says he's sitting there. Welcome, Messiah. Thank you for joining us. Praise God. Apostles, secondary prophets, then you got teachers. All a teacher does is read the word with some understanding and teach other people. Just like what? Like the Levites used to do. Just like the Levites. Not every Levite can do the sacrifices and stand up there and be somebody. The Levites were teachers under the old covenant. Under the new covenant, it's spiritual Israel is the teachers. Some are physical, some aren't. But you have to have understanding before you can stand up here. You can't be a novice. The book warns us about that. There are no prophets and apostles today, sisters and brothers. There's teachers. Go ahead, brother. 
after after that miracle, uh -huh. then gifts of healing, helps, government, diversities of tongues. These are very real things today, sisters and brothers. I don't see a lot of the healings, and I don't see a lot of uh, the miracles. I've seen, I've seen miracles. I see a lot of those, but not in the sense where some people might say miracles. We're all, man, it's too hot and dark in here. I wish it was 50 degrees and it was bright and all the curtains slide open in the earth. All of a sudden, it's 50 degrees. That's not the kind of miracle we're talking about here, sisters and brothers. And we're not, in a sense, talking about the miracles that happen when Paul or, or, or Peter's walking or Jesus is walking and they grab his fringes. Oh, I felt virtue go out of me. We're not talking about those kind of miracles today either. It could very well be happening. The miracles today is a wicked heart like mine that's no longer wicked, that desires to be pleasing the Messiah. That's a miracle. And other sisters and brothers coming to Christ in prison, those are miracles. Miracles of healings today, if I knew that I had the ability to heal people, I wouldn't have time to stand up here. I'd be in every hospital in the country laying hands on people. But you know what? There's sisters and brothers that have that ability. I believe that because I can read that. But i got to believe that the Lord would give them some knowledge and understanding on how and when to use it, too. Because otherwise we'd be hearing the news channels would be following Joe Smith as he goes to his 42nd hospital in three weeks and heals the entire ICU. The Lord has these given people these abilities, but he's had to give them knowledge on when to use it and how to zip it. Because if he gave it to me, man, everybody would know it. Go ahead and tell us where you're at. Continue, brother. Uh, verse 29. Yes, sir. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak to, with tongues, do all interpret, uh -huh. but, co but covet earnestly the best gift, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Are all apostles? No. Apostles are all long gone. Are all prophets? No, they're all long gone. The last prophet was a prophet like unto Moses. That was Messiah. Are all teachers? No, not all are teachers. All workers of miracles? No. We all have a gift. Find that gift. But when the Lord reveals you that gift to you, take it and run with it with everything you've got. But sisters and brothers, today there are no prophets. There are no apostles. There's teachers of God. There's teachers of God that learn from the prophets and from the apostles and disciples. And if the Lord sets them up, they come up here and they put that spirit that the Lord has put on them. And hopefully the Lord puts that spirit on you. So I thank you today for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word. And I hope that somebody got something from this lesson. Enjoy the rest of the Sabbath, sisters and brothers.